Hey everybody, this is Evolution of Dolphins and I am Doodley here to present you with the info. Over the course of a long ass time, dolphins have lost many things throughout their evolutionary history, such as the ability to smell and say, walk. But that's a pretty cool thought though, isn't it? That dolphins once walked on land. But how can we be really sure that dolphins did once walk on land and that this is not just some myth or scientific error? given the fact that they're so well adapted to the water? It's a good question. There are a few things that we would expect to find within the dolphin's anatomy if their ancestor truly did originate on land. We'd expect to find vestigial leg bones, lungs, nipples, among other things. But the first thing we should look at is the skull of the dolphin. The skull is going to tell us a lot about the ancestry and whether it really truly did originate on land or not. It's actually a very unique among the animal kingdom and doesn't really fit in amongst fish or any other living animals today, other than other dolphins, of course. Now, I typically tend to stay away from fossil evidence, but in this video, I feel that we're really going to have to do a lot of skull comparisons to get to the bottom of this mystery. Here, we have the skull of a dolphin, flat and smooth with cone-shaped teeth. All the teeth look to be about the same size and are fairly rounded around the edges. Here is the skull of a wolf. The teeth are way off, jagged, crushing, and different in varying sizes. Take notice of the position of the nostril on the wolf skull as well. It's directly in front of the face as opposed to on the top of the snout. This is enough evidence alone to discard the notion that dolphins are descendants of the Cannonay family. This would exclude the possibility that raccoons and foxes are within their line of descent since they both share similar skulls along with the wolf. If we continue along this trend, we'd also have to discard the entire order of carnivora because they all share practically the same skull, despite their outward appearances. This would rule out lions, hyenas, bears, wolves, foxes, raccoons, badgers, and even cats. But to take a look at this crocodile skull here, take a look at this crocodile skull, now we can see some serious similarities between the croc skull and the dolphin skull. Same flattened top, the nostrils are resting at the top of the snout rather than on the center of it, and the teeth are cone-shaped and widely spaced. But this can't be right either because dolphins are mammals and not reptiles. Reptiles share hardly anything in common with mammals. They have no hair, no belly button, they aren't warm-blooded, and they don't nurse their young with mammary glands and nipples. So it's safe to say that we can cross crocs off of the list of possible ancestors as well. Uh, so what else does that leave us with? Fish? Fish don't share similar skulls or anatomy, so there, there's just no way that a dolphin is a fish. This conundrum is just the type of mystery that will go on to lead scientists to coin the phrase missing link. It was the missing ancestor that would likely link dolphins with land mammals that we were missing. We didn't have it. So scientists searched and the search went on for years until finally in 2001 a group of paleontologists digging about in Pakistan found a skull that looked precisely like that of modern dolphins today. They named it Pachycetus, in honor of the region that they'd found it in. The skull of Pachycetus was nearly identical to that of modern-day dolphins, given the fact that it lived 50 million years ago. Both skulls had long, triangular dimensions, the teeth were coned, evenly spaced, and had a nostril on the top of the snout rather than on the front of it. The paleontologists kept digging and soon found other fossils that seemed to be the transitional stages between Pachycetus' land-based life and its progressive adaption to the sea. Pachycetus evolved into Ambulocete, Ambulocete into Remingtonocetus, from Remingtonocetus to Protocetus, from Protocetus to Duradon, and Duradon branched off into two families which are known as Odontocetes and Mysticetes, both of which are modern-day whales and dolphins. So you ask me, Doodle, you still haven't shown how dolphins originated on land. You haven't proved that. You have no evidence for that. Where's the evidence? Well, 
I've shown plenty of fossil evidence to punctuate that point, but you're right. I much prefer studying living animals rather than dead ones. So let's get to it. Firstly, all land animals breathe air and utilize their nostrils to breathe that air. Fish, on the other hand, cannot perform this nifty trick because they do not have lungs, like dolphins do. So where's the dolphin's nostril, you ask? Well, that'd be that big ass hole on the top of their head that we discussed earlier. Further proof that the dolphin's one blowhole is indeed two fused nostrils, take a look at the whale's blowholes, which have retained the use of both of their nostrils. Fish do not operate this way. They do not have lungs. Instead, they have gills and therefore don't breathe air through their nostrils. In fact, their nostrils are not used for breathing at all. Rather, they gulp water as they swim and force it out through their gill slits. A fish's nostrils are in fact not for breathing, but for the sole purpose of smell. Which is kind of cool because, I mean, who knew fish had nostrils? So you see, a dolphin's blowhole is not an alternative gill or another type of gill. It is a true nostril used for sucking in air and using their lungs to diffuse that air with. Surprisingly though, dolphins and whales can't actually smell using their nostrils because they're completely lacking the olfactory lobes used to process scent. So dolphins and whales can't actually smell anything. Astonishing as that may be though, dolphins seem to have found a way around such tragic circumstances as they actually taste the world around them, much like snakes do, as opposed to sniffing it and can therefore taste whether there is a high concentration of fish in the area or not. This acute sense of taste has replaced the need for an acute sense of smell. This of course dispels the myth that one cannot taste without the ability to smell. So now we know that the whales and dolphins have lungs and nostrils and are inconveniently forced to hold their breath for 90% of their lives. So what other vestiges do they have? Dolphins are highly vocal creatures compared to their fishy counterparts, which is another very solid indication that whales and dolphins once lived on land. That's not to say that fish don't communicate audibly, because they do. However, most of their communication cannot be heard by the human ear, as they prefer to speak in lower frequencies. In fact, nearly all dolphins and whales are well known for their excessive communication skills. Hell, most of the time they just won't shut the fuck up. Beluga whales are especially known for their talkativeness and constant series of squeals and whistles, giving them the nickname Sea Canaries. Male humpback whales sing with one of the loudest songs in the animal kingdom, a song that can be heard up to five to 10,000 miles away. Another significant indicator that dolphins and whales once lived on land is their extraordinary finger bones. And yes, you did hear me correctly, I said finger bones. Take a look. Their middle fingers are longer than their outer fingers, just like a human hand. They have wrist bones and a radius and ulna, just as every other land animal does. Fish and sharks do not have such things. The question is then, why the hell would anything create something with finger and hand bones that spends 100% of its time in the ocean? Now that really doesn't make any sense. Why not just solve the problem like the sharks did and have cartilage extensions? The answer is simple once you begin looking at it for what it truly is. Dolphins and whales were not designed whole and complete. They evolved from land animals and adapted to life in the sea. This is why they have hands. This is the full length version of microevolution. This is macroevolution. This is evolution at its finest. If you like this video, give me the thumbs up and share with a friend. The more you share, the more videos you allow me to create. Thanks again for listening and until next time.